I'm Mr. Napick. We're here at Tucker High School, and I am reintroducing Vesper Theory to my IB juniors today. Um, okay, we should have learned the basis of this last year, right? But you called it VSEPR, not Vesper, yes. yeah. right? Okay, um, so we are going to start right away with Lewis structures uh, because hopefully that's still somewhat familiar to you. I hope it is. Uh, I think they're fun. Um, now, I need to know ahead of time, did you guys do everything based off the octet rule last year? Yes. yes. Okay, we're going to break that, like shatter that almost immediately, okay? The octet rule is really great for introducing Vesper, but it's incomplete, okay? I know it seems like a golden rule, we can't break this rule or whatever, um, unless it's like hydrogen, uh, but we're going to shatter it right away. Are we ready to break that? Yes. Okay, um, we'll, 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 we'll go slowly through it. So, uh, do we want to briefly go over the rules again? Okay, let's briefly go over the rules. Remember, this is almost impossible to explain in writing. We just have to practice it, right? So, um, these steps should always work for you for structures with exceptions and for structures with expanded octets um, and for things that just follow the octet rule, okay? Um, so, do we remember how to count valence electrons? Yes. Yes. yes, you have a periodic table on there, right? Remember, that's groups one through 18. We're not working with transition metals yet. We will next year. Um, remember how many valence electrons here? One, One two, two three. three through eight, right? Did you guys do any structures with noble gases last year? No. Why not? What's the reason why you didn't? Because they don't have any valence electrons. They actually do have valence electrons. They have eight of them available. So, but these can only form expanded octet structures. So if you guys didn't work with it last year, that's why. Um, what else do you know about the noble gases? What else about them? They fulfill their octet rule. They fulfill their own octet, which makes them, in terms of reactivity? Stable. stable. Yeah. yeah, very stable, very happy. Um, in reality, argon and beyond can, can form structures. Neon and helium almost never will. Uh, and argon's extremely rare, but krypton, xenon for sure. Um, OK. Remember, if the molecule has a charge on it, then it's a molecular ion. Um, if it's positively charged, it's going to lose electrons. What's the charge of an electron? Negative. Negative, thank you. Um, if it's negatively charged, it must gain electrons, right? By whatever the charge is. Negative three, gain three electrons, right? Um, your valence electrons for this year must always be an even number. So if you're counting them up um, and you get an odd number, check the charge first off um, and then go check your math after that because likely it's gonna be a charge issue, okay? Um, but there are molecules with odd numbers of electrons, they're just highly unstable, except for one, and that's Tempo, and he's my favorite molecule for that reason. Um, okay, then we have to identify our central atom. Did you guys do any that had more than one central atom last year? Oh, this is so exciting. You have so much to learn. I love this. Um, so we can have more than one. That's fine. You'll see when that happens. Um, it'll always be your least electronegative species. Do we remember the electronegativity trend? Yes. yes. What is electronegativity as a concept? Exactly, yeah. So if something is really electronegative, what does that mean? It has a really good strong pull. It wants to hold electrons in, right? So who's the most electronegative element? We talk about that all the time. Well, noble gases have already completed their stuff, so they're mostly happy. Who's the most electronegative on here besides noble gas? Fluorine. So cesium would be the least electronegative, right? This would be the most electronegative, right? So the closer it is to fluorine in that direction, like a big diagonal arrow in that direction, um, the least it wants to be the central atom, the more it wants electrons. OK, then we're going to place bonds between the exterior or terminal atoms, the ones on the outside, and the central atoms. Um, so this is basically just connecting everything together. Uh, don't connect your exterior atoms together. Make no triangles here, OK? The only triangle we'll work with is next year, and that's an epoxy functional group. Um, then we'll place electrons on our exterior atoms until we run out. Why not hydrogen? Why would it never be hydrogen? It only has one. Third. It only has one valence electron normally. It also only has one proton, right? Yes. There's almost no way hydrogen is going to hold more than one electron, really. And then if you have too many electrons, put them on your central atom. If you have too few, we're going to create double and triple bonds between the central and terminal atoms. You'll see. And these two rules will break the octet rule. 
okay? The octet rule is kind of garbage. Just get it out of your mind. Um, it applies most of the time in organic chemistry. And then these are the guys who can break the octet rule. It's every element in the third period and below. If they're acting as the central atom, they can break their octet rule. So I've given you the list there. But where, who does the third period start with? Sodium. Sodium, right? Periods go across, right? So it's these guys and below can all expand their octets. They'll all break the octet rule if they're forced to. They won't necessarily do, choose to do it on their own. OK? We'll see what that looks like. Um, OK. Um, did I put the exceptions on the previous page? I didn't. OK. We have three exceptions. Um, one of the exceptions is hydrogen, right? So hydrogen does not follow the octet rule. How many does it want? Two. It wants two, right, in the form of a bond? Right, so hydrogen always wants a duet instead of an octet, right? The next exception is going to be beryllium. Beryllium is very small. How many protons does beryllium have? It has four. It's pretty much incapable of holding extra electrons. So this one's a quartet. OK. Did you guys learn that one last year? No. no? OK. Um, and then the last one is going to be boron sometimes. How many protons does boron have? Um, five. It's five. So it's capable of holding six. It can do eight if it's asked very nicely to. Um, but this will want a sextet. Okay, so duet, quartet, sextet. Um, this is uh, sometimes, sometimes eight, okay? Um, it'll be very obvious when it wants eight versus not. Uh, so let's do, let's do this guy first. I'll, ha I'll do this one with you guys and then set you free for a minute, okay? Um, so. We should, what, what's our first step here? What do you mean by part of the charges? Valence electrons, right? Factoring in the charge. Um, so how many valence electrons does silicon have? Four. four. And how do you know that it has four valence electrons? It's in group 14, right? Um, so we have four valence electrons here. You'll see all year and next year. I, I abbreviate electrons with E minus, but I, I circled the minus just to make it very obvious. Um, OK, and then how many does hydrogen have? One. 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 one each. So we have another four, right? So four times one valence electrons. So how many do we have total? Four. For, between both. Oh, eight. eight of them, right? So we have eight to work with. OK. Who's our central atom here? SI. 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 What's its name? It has a name, right? Uh, silicon, right? Yeah. Okay, what's our next step? Yeah, place the terminal atoms or exterior atoms around it. Um, so we have four hydrogens. We're going to place those around it, right? And then what's next? Yeah, create some bonds, right? How many electrons are in each bond? One, two. Two are in each bond, right? So if two are in each bond, how many have we used? Eight. Eight. How many do we have left? Zero. 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 Right? Now, if we want to check with the octet rule, is everyone satisfied? Yes. yes. It is. Right? Silicon has eight that it's experiencing. Here it's following the octet rule. It doesn't have to. Um, hydrogen was our exception. Right? We have duets for everyone, so we're good. Um, so can you guys try this guy? This one's going to have a weird exception, right? Yeah. Beryllium's one of our guys, right? Uh, talk to each other. And then chlorine has, has seven electrons. Yeah, so it has one valence electron per, so it'd be two times one valence electron. Yeah, times two. Beryllium would be the central atom. Yeah. Yeah. So should we put a double bond? And this is four, and then. Mm, you, yeah, be a one, two, double bond, right? No, it shouldn't be a double bond because you have two electrons in a bond, in a single bond, oh, yeah. and there's two okay. of them. So there's four, and then there's four total. Because so then what is the quartet stuff? I think that's it. Right. 
beryllium is a fort is a quartet. <laughs> well, you have two um, electrons in this bond and two electrons in this bond. So that means there's four in beryllium. So, if we draw the dots, I think it'll be easier. Yeah, you can do. So, what is, is it this? supposed to include the dots? No, but like it helps. <laughs> okay, so like this is what I got. I feel like I'm going to get one. But you only have we kind of like this. We have to draw the, fail, the unshared mm -hmm. pairs. And then Berlin doesn't have any unshared pairs because it only has four protons. Yeah. Only old four protons. So we want to go exterior first, right? Because beryllium is one of our exceptions. It only wants four. Yeah. Right? So you've already drawn your bonds in, right? Yeah. There's two from each. Yeah, so you have two from each bond. So beryllium's happy. Yeah. So where, where, where do the lone pairs have to go? Fluorines. All the fluorines, yes. right? So wait, the fluorine is, they've got one, no, they need one. What you, one what? Wait, if you, where would you put them on the fluorine? So remember, they go in pairs, Yes. right? Um, how many electrons do you have left to work with? Two. Yeah. I guess from this Wait, I'm curious. How, how many valence electrons did you start with? Oh. How many does fluorine have? Fluorine has... Oh, so, fluorine um, has seven, seven, right? Sorry. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so sorry. And then how many did the beryllium have? Two. Yeah. Two, right? So how many, how many valence electrons do you have total? Sixteen. Sixteen, yeah. right? Beryllium has four. Does beryllium have four? It has two. It has two. Beryllium wants a quartet, yeah. right? But it itself only has two valence electrons. Okay. okay. Right? So in total it would be 16 valence electrons? Yes. Yeah. And then it and wants a there. quartet, so you need four. So how many are in each bond? Two. Two, two. two each, right? So, so beryllium's two. done. Yeah. Right? He's happy. Yeah. So where do the electrons have to go then? They can't go on beryllium. Fluorine. Fluorine, right? So place them in pairs. How are we doing? So why do you have, I'm curious, did you place singular electrons last year? Yeah. Why? They always, exist, they always exist in pairs, right? So these two are going to hop down there. So I'll draw it out for you. OK. So do we all get to this point before we start getting lost? How many valence electrons did we have to work with? 16, right? Two from this guy plus two times seven. So we had 16, right? Yeah. Now, how many electrons does beryllium experience right now? Four. 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 Two from each bond. Beryllium only wants a quartet, so we don't touch beryllium anymore. Yeah. It's done, right? How many electrons do we have left to work with? Twelve. So we have 12 to work with left, right? Yeah. Did we learn that electrons exist in pairs last year? We did? Okay. I didn't want to, I guess I made that assumption, but I, I'm glad we learned it. Um, so we can only place them in pairs. If we can't put them on beryllium, where are they going? Fluorine. They're going on fluorine. There's a pair. How many do I have left? Ten. Eight. Six. Four. Two. And I'm out, right? Let's check octets. Beryllium was happy. Is fluorine happy? Yes. Is the other fluorine happy? then so are we, right? Yeah. BEF2, right? Yeah. So um, now try it with BCL3 real quick. It should go a little faster this time. Right. Did you guys learn to draw electrons around it first and then bond them? Yeah. Interesting, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, that'll have to change a bit okay. soon. Um, it'll work for now. But the second we work with like carbon monoxide, uh -huh. which I think is down here, it's going to have to change. So you've got about one page left of doing this. Okay. And then you're going to have to change. Um, so let's see. How many electrons have you used right now? Um, I think you've used too many. Okay. <laughs> so how many valence electrons do we have to start with? Uh, six. Oh, Where'd you get six? Boron wants six, ultimately. Okay. But how many valence electrons does boron have? Uh, it's in this. So one, two, three, right? 
So we got three there. So three for the from the boron, right? And then how many for each chlorine? Oh, I get it now. Okay. okay. Are we good with this one? Any questions about it? No, I just do I add another electron to it because it's negative? Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Yeah. So over here, boron is happy with just the six, right? But if this was like BF4 minus, which exists, um, it would have to go to eight, right? We got BCL3? Yeah. yeah. Lone pairs around the chlorines? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Cool. Okay, cool. So is this y'all's first time doing the, the more than one central? No, Zev's just good at that, right? Okay. Um, that's awesome. Good. How many valence electrons do we have to work with here? Guys in the back, you tell me. 24. 24. Why not 23? Because it's a polyatomic. I mean, it has a negative charge. It's an ion, right? Yeah. It is a polyatomic ion, right? That's nitrate. Did we remember that? Yes. yes. Did we act for Yes. Okay. Um, all right, who's my central atom? Nitrogen. Nitrogen. It's the least electronegative, and it's nitrogen, which is on our rules, right? Yeah. So nitrogen, and we place the oxygens. Okay, we're going to bond them. How many electrons are left to work with? Uh, 18. 18. Right, so now we have 18 left. Now, um, we want to drop these on the exterior, guys. So we'll drop two, four. That's ugly. Six, two, four, six, two, four, six. How many have I dropped? I've dropped all 18, right? Mm -hmm. Are we content with this? Yes. Oh, we are. OK. Wait. We shouldn't be. Uh, right? Yeah, Is oxygen happy? Yeah. Oh, no, it's maybe because there's an electron that's not being bonded. What do you mean? I think nitrogen's unhappy, yeah. right? So how many electrons does this oxygen experience? It experiences eight, right? Nitrogen only experiences six. Nitrogen only experiences six, right? It has two there, two there, and two there. Yes. So if we, I'm going to scroll up and it's going to look bad. Um, if we look at our rules, if we have too few electrons, rule seven, rule seven, um, if we have too few electrons create double or triple bonds between the exterior and central atom. Um, so let's scroll this back into position. So we ran out before nitrogen was happy, right? Uh, Does that make sense? Yeah. So we don't have enough electrons for nitrogen right now, right? Just get rid of two of the electrons. Would you get rid of an electron pair on the oxygen and make a double bond? Yeah. Nitrogen. Which oxygen, though? Does it maybe matter? the bottom one? It doesn't really matter. Do you want to do the bottom one? Yeah. Do you have a question? Uh, I don't understand why nitrogen's unhappy here. Because if the bonds would, like, two, four, six, and then each oxygen has six electrons. It has to have an octet because it's not a regular. Yeah. Remember the octet rule from last year? Yeah. It still kind of applies. Like, there is still some use for it. Um, right now, nitrogen is not experiencing an octet. We, it's, like, it's electron deficient right now. It needs a few more. Each oxygen has eight, not six around it. Okay. Right? It has six in terms of lone uh, pairs, but it's got two more from the bond, yeah. right? So we have to take some electrons from an exterior atom and turn it into a double bond. So uh, someone said they wanted to use the bottom one. So let's use the bottom one. Um, we're going to take these electrons and move them in to form this double bond here. So the new structure looks like this. Oh, sorry. We, we used the bottom one. So we got a double bond to oxygen now. Right? Now, does everyone have an octet here? Yes. Everyone does have an octet here, right? These oxygens are still happy. They were unchanged, right? Mm -hmm. They had eight. Nitrogen now has four bonds around it, which is eight electrons. This oxygen has two bonds and two lone pairs, right? Each lone pair and each bond contains two. So we've, we've got eight on him as well, right? Thank you for joining us today. I hope you learned a little bit of chemistry. Um, this is a higher level course, so some of it might be confusing. And what was that? <laughs> 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 there we go.